Hello everyone, it's your boy Benny from Kamui Cosplay. Long time no see, how are you doing? A lot of you people in the comments said you wanted us to make a video about how we draw our blueprints. And you know, I am a crowd pleaser. So I sat down and recorded the entire process of how we do it just for you. As my example, I chose to draw this rifle from the Mandalorian TV show. But I guess this is no surprise to you, since you already saw the thumbnail for this video. Now I have yet to see the actual show myself, because Disney Plus is not launching in Europe until April 2020. But from what I can tell through all the memes I see online, I guess the Mandalorian gets his rifle from this guy. Anyway, if you want to know how to turn your finished blueprints into badass foam weapons, don't forget to get Svetlana's book about how to make foam props on KamuiCosplay.com. I've read it all the way through. All you need to know is right in there. You know, I'm not getting forced to say that. <laughs> No. <laughs> step number one, searching for good references. Before we start drawing anything, the first step to any good blueprint is to spend some time researching for high quality reference material. Now, if you want to build something from a video game, that's usually pretty easy. Many games nowadays offer solid photo modes that let you look at your props and costumes up close and even take screenshots. They also often have official reference guides or art books that can be quite useful. For anime, comics, movies and TV shows, however, this can be more difficult. Our goal is to find at least one high resolution side view of whatever we want to build. So the sources I always check are the Google Image Search, ArtStation, Sketchlab and Pinterest. When searching for the Mandalorian rifle, however, it was really hard to find any good screenshots from the episodes, as apparently they never properly show the rifle from basically any side. So Google Image Search and Pinterest turned out to be pretty useless here. While looking for 3D models, however, I saw that someone on myminifactory.com already made a pretty dope 3D model that I could download for free even. Lucky. Thank you to Rob Parsa for the model. I'll make sure to put a link to it in the video description below. So I just downloaded the model, imported it into Blender, put all the parts together and then made some screenshots from the side, the back, the front and the top. Now I'm not 100% sure how screen accurate his model is, but since you apparently can barely see the rifle in the show anyway, I think it's pretty good. Step number two, choosing the program. The program I always use to draw our blueprints is Adobe Illustrator. Illustrator comes with the Adobe Creative Cloud that also includes Photoshop and Lightroom, which we use to edit our photos, Premiere, which we use to edit our videos, Audition, which we use to edit our sound, and InDesign, which we use to lay out our books. So for us, the price of admission is definitely justified. I know these programs are rather expensive and not everyone can afford to pay a monthly fee just to draw some pretty lines. So I will also include instructions to create blueprints with the free software Inkscape at the end of this video. Keep in mind though that the general principle of how things are drawn is pretty much the same between both Illustrator and Inkscape. So if you understand Illustrator, you will also understand Inkscape. It's just not as comfortable to use, but you know, at least it's free. Step number three, setting up and scaling the reference image. So this is what Illustrator looks like when you first open it. To begin, we will need to create a new document, a blank page, so to speak. Based on the action figure I saw, the rifle of the Mandalorian is about 60 inch or 150 centimeter long. So I'm gonna create a document large enough to fit that in. You can always change this at any point though, so it really doesn't matter that much for now. Anyway, now you'll find your artboard in the middle, your working tools on the left and some additional settings at the top and the right side. It's pretty straightforward. I know there are a lot of scary buttons everywhere, but don't worry, the only few things we will need to create our blueprint are the selection tool, the direct selection tool, the pen tool and maybe some lines and shapes. By the way, you can get more options if you click on the tool and hold your mouse down. Here, for example, you can switch between drawing a rectangle and drawing circles and other shapes. On the right side, we only need the info box, the properties windows and the layers. Not that complicated. Now let's load in our reference images we want for the rifle. You do that by clicking on file, place and then select the image or images you want to place on your artboard. I'm gonna go with the side view of my rifle for now. If it's too big or too small, just click on one corner of the image and scale it down or up a bit. 
To make sure I scale it properly, I'm gonna click on the rectangle tool and then on the artboard to create a rectangle of 150 centimeter width. Now I can remove the filling color, set the border color to red and use it as my guide to fit the image inside. Make sure to hold down the shift key while you do that so the image is not squeezed or stretched. You can delete the rectangle again when you're done. And now we're finally ready to draw. Step number four, drawing all the lines. We want to draw our own lines on the top of this image, so we need to be able to see what we do. For that, select your reference image, go to Window, Transparency and set it to like 50%. Uh, that's much better. I'm gonna call this layer Reference Image and lock it by clicking on the lock icon. This prevents me from accidentally moving it around. Now let's create a new layer on top and call it Blueprint. Now we're ready to roll. My next step is to figure out how I want to separate the rifle into individual parts. So later for Svetlana it's easier to build it. I'm thinking about separating the grip, the middle part, the pipes and the tip. To draw my lines I select the pen tool, change the line color to black and the line thickness to around 2 point. If you see these purple lines here popping up, they are called smart guides. And usually they're pretty smart, but right now we don't need them. So I deactivate them by clicking on view and smart guides. Next I'm zooming in and start tracing the grip of the rifle. If you click once with the pen tool, you can create a simple corner point. But if you click, hold and draw your mouse, you can create curves. Just use these two types of points and follow along the outline of the hilt. I always recommend tracing the shape with as few points as you can. If you mess up, don't worry, just delete the point again or use the direct selection tool and grab either the point or the little handles and adjust them some more. If you click and hold the pen tool icon, you can also select different sub-tools that either let you add additional points or delete unnecessary ones. Now I set my line thickness to one point and draw on the additional details. I always use the thick lines to highlight the general parts that need to be separated and then the thinner lines to mark any alterations or additional details. So far so good. Next the pipes in the middle. These are pretty simple to do. Just draw a few rectangles first and fill them with white if you want them to be in front of the others. You can also copy and paste them very easily using the smart guides that I showed you before. I speeded up the process here a bit, but an additional smaller pipe at the bottom and a few more rectangles later, this section was done as well. The tip of the rifle is also rather easy to trace. First let's bring in some rulers by going to View, Rulers and Show Rulers. If you now click and hold your mouse on the top ruler, you can drag a guideline down to the middle of the tip. We will use this in a second to mirror the lower half, so we don't have to draw it twice. But first let's draw some more lines. I'm speeding it up again. A few points and curves later, it's done. By the way, if you click on a corner point that doesn't have any handles, there is a little circle that appears next to it. If you click and drag this one, you can turn your corner into a nice curve. Ok, now select all the parts you just created and group them together by going to Object and Group. Now you can just copy and paste this whole part and then go to Object, Transform and Reflect to mirror it for the top. 
easy. Almost done, the only part missing is the middle section. When you encounter a more complicated collection of shapes like this area here, I recommend going back and checking your original reference image to see how it is put together. This will definitely help you out to figure out those pieces more easily. Since this part is gonna take a while, I will speed up the process again. Basically, I just used the same lines, curves and rectangles I used for the other parts before. And all done. For Svetlana, this would probably already be enough to build a foam version of this prop. But still, I'm going to show you really quick how you would go about drawing the other views too. For this, just drag out a few additional guidelines to mark the height and the length of the rifle, as well as where the base parts will be separated. Then go again to File and Place and select the other views you want to trace as well. Now you can place them next to your side view and rescale them to fit the same size. If you run out of space, just go to Document Setup, Edit Artboard and add a little bit more to each side. After you've lined everything up correctly, just create a new layer and start tracing again. With this, you will end up with the handy multi-view blueprint in no time. When you're satisfied with everything, don't forget to save the file and then have fun printing it out. Of course, this rifle is way too big to fit on one page, but luckily Illustrator has some very solid printing options, so you can easily set it to print over multiple pages. And with this, you're good to go and ready to build the real thing. Okay, I promised to quickly show you the process in Inkscape as well. So here we go. This is how Inkscape looks when you open it. It's kind of similar to Illustrator, but not quite. The tools are still on the left and the additional settings are still at the top and the right. First, let's set up the document. For this, go to File and Document Properties. Here you can input the dimensions just as before. To place the reference image, go to File, Import and navigate to the side view image. Now again, create a box, set the filling to nothing, the line stroke to red and make it 150 cm wide so you can fit your rifle image inside, you know, just like before. When you scale an Inkscape, you have to hold the control key to keep the aspect ratio of your image, by the way. Now delete the box, set the layer opacity to 50%, lock this layer and create a new one on top. You can zoom in and out by clicking plus and minus on your keyboard and hold down the spacebar to pan around the view. Sadly, Inkscape doesn't really have the best performance, but hey, it's free. Anyway, now we need the pen tool, which is located right here. The pen tool is basically the same as an illustrator. You click to create corner points and click and hold to create curves. When you're done or want to change anything, click on the Edit Path tool. If you want to change the stroke style, you can do that right here on the right. Of course, you can also draw rectangles and circles, just like before. In general, Inkscape does basically the same as Illustrator. It's just a little bit more clunky and less comfortable to use. You can also create guidelines by dragging them from the rulers, group your objects, change their order or place additional reference images. So you see, you can draw your blueprints without having to spend a monthly fee for Illustrator. The only useful things Inkscape is missing, apart from a stable performance, are the smart guides and an option to print your drawings over multiple pages. But luckily there's a remedy for that. Just save your drawing as a PDF file and then open it in the free Adobe Acrobat Reader. Here you can set it to poster print and it will automatically print it over multiple pages depending on the page settings you enter here. 
Now just print out your pages, glue your pages together and you have a cool blueprint to work with. Also, if you want to try to build the actual rifle, I put up the blueprint for free on kalmecosplay.com. Before I close this video, here are some additional final thoughts. Do you even need to draw a blueprint? Well, I think that depends. If you only have bad references of whatever you want to build, a proper blueprint can definitely help you with your crafting. It's always good to have some clean lines that you can follow. If you're lucky enough to find a good 3D model like me and want to save some time, I'd argue it's totally okay to just print out the screenshots. We also did this a couple of times in the past and it works out just fine. I however still prefer to have a clean drawing instead and with some practice it doesn't really take that long. Next, what about perspective? Most reference images do have a slight perspective to them, you know, like the lens of a camera. Here for example you see the rifle with perspective and here you can see it without perspective. Do you see the difference? With and without. With and without. The shield from Zelda we made for example is rounded, so from the front view many of the lines are shifted because of this perspective. Here it is important to know that you should always draw your blueprint like you need it for building, not how it is. So feel free to correct some lines if you need to. And last but not least, how do you figure out how large your pieces need to be in real life? For blasters and rifles, Svetlana always looks for pipes in the blueprint. The good thing about pipes is they have the same diameter from the side as well as from the top. So if you know this pipe from the Mandalorian rifle is 2.5 cm, this already helps you a lot to figure out the proper sizes for the other parts too. Same goes for swords, for example. If you know how thick the blade is, like here with our master sword for example, you can also tell how thick the rest of the sword needs to be. So always try to find a good reference point with a fixed known thickness. And yeah, that's it so far. No more tips from me today. So I hope this video explained a little bit better how we draw our own blueprints. As always, if I was able to help you out with this video in any way, please consider leaving a like or a comment. The more we get of those, the more YouTube will recommend our video to more people, which in return helps us make more videos. So thank you in advance. And if you don't know what to say, just write Corgi in the comments, or write buy her books, or tell me in detail why that guy's name is Mando. Like, I know he's a Mandalorian, but is every Mandalorian called Mando? Are the female Mandalorians called Mandy? Questions that keep me awake at night. Well, I hope you had fun. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell or support us on Patreon. Wünsche euch noch einen schönen Tag and bye bye.